And I don't really know what anybody is expecting for a while. Which is bad. So if you're not going to go to Achievement counter on this card. This card gains plus 300, plus 300 for each achievement counter on it. So he can get really big really fast. Four copies of this is a must. Next is Alice's little supply force. These are very handy in the fact of if you get your, say you, you pop out your ruler and you've got your 10 man. She's going to double all boosts on him. So if you can get him up to like a thousand attack and then flip her, now he's two thousand attack. This card here allows you to have that to be enough to just one turn drop your opponent. This is a one drop like 
um, it has the ability that you can pay one light and banish this card, recover a target resonator. So if 10 man's at 2,000, and there's things in here that can give him apply. He swings in for 2,000, banish little supply force, recover, swing in for 2,000 for game. That makes this, this cut the time needed to build up this deck in half. This is really essential for speed. Next, another thing that's essential for speed is Gretel. Um, now this, I've been... Um, if any of you guys watch Ripley Justice, or know Ripley Justice, this is actually the deck that she uses. Um, I suggest running Gretel at 4. Taking out the Heart Stirring Sage and Glinda. And just running 4 Gretels. But uh, I'll go ahead and explain the Glindas here with uh, her revision. Or the Heart Stirring Sage first. Um, you can tap the Sage, and a Resonator's attack becomes equal to its defense. There's um, a few additions in here that boost just the defense and allow you to draw cards. So she put in the Sage to kind of make them still boost the attack. It's kind of a good idea, but I still think that the Gretels are more important for early on mana gain. Or early on will and stone gain quickly. Because Gretel's ability is when... Pay 2, drop Gretel, he's a 2-2. Two, two. It says, enter, reveal the top card of your magic stone deck. If it's a wind stone, put it into the magic stone area. Which means, basically, all of these are wind. So, you put down Gretel, and it calls a stone for you. And it gives you that stone advantage right off the bat. Glinda's, um, these are interesting. She's got these in here because target resonator can't be blocked until the end of the turn. It's a good idea for the double swing with 10 man, like I was telling you. The downside with Glenda is she's a drop. But the effect does last for the entire turn. So if you recover him, he still cannot be blocked. She has a second ability that you can banish her and cancel a target normal spell, unless its controller pays two more. So, I mean, it, it's a little bit of control, um, a little bit of, you know, unblockable. <laughs> so those are the resonators. This is a very spell-heavy deck. So right off the bat, Obviously, we're having three refars. I would run four, but I guess three is a wise idea. You don't want too many. Because refar, you play it, and you get to J-activate for free. Not only will this put an achievement counter in your 10-man, because it's an addition field, it already boosts all resonators plus one, plus one. Um, it has a second ability. You can banish this card, and target resonator gains plus 100, plus 100 until the end of the turn. If you've J-activated her, that's doubled. So, really nice. These are the most broken grass cards I've ever seen. Rewriting laws. You can pay two to activate it. It allows you to draw a card, and then it gives your magic, all of your magic zones the ability to produce will of any color. Then immediately it will recover two stones. It's a two cost that recovers two stones, which essentially makes it free. The only requirement is that you have two stones. <laughs> it's a free draw card. So you've got four of these, and you've got four um, fleet nears, which if you've got more Gianna on the field, looking at the top three of your deck, you're just drawing like a madman in a single turn. Now we'll go into some uh, more additions. This is the branch of Yggdrasil. This is the one that plus 400 to the defense, and when it enters the field, you get to draw a card. Really good, because it will put achievement counters on 10-man and boost the defense up, as well as allowing you to draw a card. So that is very good. And again, with more Gianna, even better. Um, the next spell is Flying Carpet. It's a one-drop addition. It doesn't boost attack, but when it enters the field, you get to draw a card. And its continuous effect is the added resonator gains flying. So this gives your 10-man flying, which allows them to attack in free. Um, so that it eliminates the need for Glinda. But Glinda's nice if your opponent is running a flying deck, because flying monsters can still walk flying monsters. Now we have four drop of Igrasil. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It says the added resonator cannot be targeted by spells or abilities your opponent controls. Now this is really good for safety, because how important Tan Man is to this deck, it needs to not die. These will make sure that it doesn't die unless there's a board wipe, like um, Dark Alice or 
you know, something else. Or just it got attacked. But you shouldn't be blocking or attacking with 10 mana until you're ready. These are protection. And again, they are additions, so they'll add achievement counters to 10 mana. Double bonus here. These are the Realm of Pure Spirits. The drop of Yggdrasil here is really good, but it requires your ruler or your um, your monster resonator to already be on the field. If ten, if I summon ten man, and there's nothing protecting him, somebody could just thunder him right off the bat, and he dies before I can even put these additions on him. Which is why Realm of Pure Spirits is so important. There's a field that says all recovered resonators you control cannot be targeted by spells or abilities. You can put this down, and it puts a blanket protection over your whole field. You might not get the achievement counter if you put it down without a 10-man, but this is going to make sure that when you put down your 10-man, it has it's blown off the field. And that is the whole deck. And it's a speed 10-man deck, because this is supposed to be almost as fast as my king deck. I've come to points playing against this deck that it was basically who went first is who won. Because the, whoever went first had that mana, or the stone advantage, and could go faster and put more down. So yeah, this has been a 10-man deck. If you're watching my YouTube, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're watching my Twitch, I uh, hope you keep watching until I take a quick break here. Okay, so.